thyroid polynomials is extremely important and is what leads to these interesting applications where you have, in effect, the series like the one you saw for the F0 of Q. So that uh, understanding uh, these sorts of things and the role played by, so to speak, the next role beyond its two-term recurrences, namely the three-term recurrences supplied by the orthogonal polynomials, is precisely where uh, what I'm looking at, and uh, indeed the applications to this broader family are uh, somehow much more grandiose, but they don't uh, fit that nicely, at least into one 38-minute talk. <laughs> Remember, I had the Frobenius symbol and I added one to every entry in the bottom row in order to make it, in order to have the full partition. And so the bottom row can't have a zero. Yeah. Um, is there a component for the total number of this? Let's say that Yes, there is. Yeah, the, the physicists, so there's a series of papers mostly in, I can't remember the exact title of physics. If you, if you look up, say, the joint papers of Tony Goodman and Mike Hirschhorn, since there's only one, that will put you in the right <laughs> journal. And, uh, and, and just go through a few years there. So the answer is yes. There is, so the obvious, the, the CSSAWs has a, the generated function of ordinary partitions. The SSAWs, which is actually what the physicists were interested in, has a much more complicated sort of linear combination of things that are like false theta series. So it's, there's nothing, there's nothing, it, it isn't lovely, but they do have it, yes. And they, and they have it in a reasonably compact form. Yes? So if the A can satisfy a recursion of order two, such as yes. and the B ends are given by this uh, one dimensional sum, there are at least three algorithms that can compute a recursion for the DNs given a recursion for the ANs and that kernel that's simple. Can you use that to just give another proof of your theorem? Uh, probably. The, the, the point, the, the, the <coughs> problem is that for in most situations, where you start out is with the, with the data. I grant you that. that you can reverse. No, I don't, I don't say, I'm just saying in applications. The, usually where, where <coughs> one is asked what's going on here, you're given the beta and you want the alpha. It's not always the case. There are certain cases where precisely the reverse is important and, and I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that in those cases what one necessarily I'll, I'll, I'll give a confusing answer. There are, there, certainly the reverse is of interest, and so what you say is, is, is significant. So if, yes. you, if you know the recursion for betas, you find the recursion for alphas, and then you try to see if you can find special solutions that perhaps you have in mind. Yeah, you could do that. You're right? Yeah, sure. You're looking at closed for alpha. So, yes. so the so point is to find solutions then for the alpha, to solve few different equations. Yeah, but they're just the one-dimensional sums, or where the inner sum satisfies a recurrence. But if the alpha satisfies a recurrence, Q recurrence of higher order, you have a problem to solve them. No, but there are three algorithms. Sure, but uh, it's still a so, so part of the problem here is that, that <coughs> what I said in order to keep myself with it, I did not spend a long time on, say, what's, what's going on here. This is, so to speak, not the starting point. The starting point is arises where, where the alphas and, beta, alphas and betas are uniquely, I mean, I gave one formula, but, but 
once you have one, you have the other one. And so you, the real question is, which one are you starting with? And normally, one starts, in most applications, one starts with the data. The alpha is automatically determined. And the real question is, what sorts of betas will give you the minimal recurrence for the alphas? And, uh, but, that, but that is not necessarily the only question that's asked. And, and so in the other direction, things definitely have risk in important applications. Yes? Um, for the, the CCELs, can you extend that to looking at just you know, strictly unimodal? Yes, yes, there are. There, there are is in the physical literature actually uh, that question of looking at convex compositions instead of concave. Yeah, and 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 uh, I could have taken those as examples of where because false data functions also arise there. Let's uh, thank the speaker again.